Hello everyone and welcome back to another how-to video from Freedom Marine. My name is Dick Veer. We're joined by Alex once again today from Revolution Yacht Experience. Today's video is for all of those Axo Bar owners that have a wet bar configuration. Alex is going to go over how to operate the stove cooktop um, on board your boat. So join us. It's another very simple video to follow along with as Alex leads us. Okay, like almost everything we do on the boat, uh, we need to start with first turning on the power. Even though we do have a propane cooktop, it does have an electrical component to it. So we do need the house bank or the service batteries on. So they are located just down here and I'm gonna push those on right now. Now that that is on, I'm gonna sh quickly show you where the pop-out fuse is located and then we'll proceed to the cockpit and show you the gas cooktop itself. Okay, so now that we've turned the main service battery switch on, I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna show you where the pop-out fuse is. You shouldn't turn the thing on and off here. In fact, you can't turn it on and off here, but if you do have a problem electrically and it's not working outside, I just wanna show you where the pop-out fuse is located in case it does need resetting. So like all the power, um, on, the, on the vessels. Uh, everything's laid out here and it's all labeled nicely. Here is one called gas grill. Now this has actually uh, got a gas cooktop uh, on board. So uh, if this is hanging out, uh, then you just push it back in. As you can see, it's rated for five amps. So you know that electrically, the propane cooktop is never drawing more than five amps. Um, but yeah, this is where it's located should you have an issue. So let's head back out and uh, have a look at that cooktop. Okay, so we've just turned the power on inside the cabin and we're out here in the cockpit now, which is the business end of the operation. If you have a 37XE with a cooktop, it's located here underneath this cover right here. So if we just push this button, we can open it up and then reveal some of the components. Immediately you're gonna see two things. Uh, you're gonna see the cooktop itself and I'll go through how that works in a moment. And you're gonna see these mirrors up here or, or large pieces of stainless. Uh, these are related to the system. Um, so if you ever close the lid and these are still a little bit hot, these act as a bit of a heat sink to uh, soak it all up. And they also reflect heat back down a little bit when you're cooking as well. So you don't uh, damage the, uh, the fiberglass reinforced plastic or fiberglass or gel coat or you know whatever you wanna you know, refer to this as. So another component out here to be aware of is this little button right under here. So if you do have your cooktop on and, and you do, are doing some cooking and maybe you've left your hot plates on, there is this little safety switch which gets depressed when you close the lid and this immediately shuts off all power to the system. So it's a safety feature that's on board and just so you guys know, that's where that button there is located. Okay, first thing we've got to do is actually have a look at uh, the propane feed, which is located under here. So we're going to open up this, uh, this locker door and I'm going to show you the tank and the regulator and the shutoff valves. Okay, so as discussed, inside this locker is uh, where all the propane and the lines and the regulators and everything is uh, located. The first thing we're gonna do is just remove this middle shelf right here so we have a little bit of a better access to what we're doing. I'll just pop that to the side for now. When we look inside, we're gonna see a few things and I'll tell you what they all are. So up here is your main shutoff. This here feeds the cooktop itself with the propane. And then we have the line that runs to the regulator. And then we have a pressure gauge. And then we have where it connects to the tank. And then obviously there's a the tank shut off itself. So just like using your barbecue at home, you start off by opening the tank itself. You open that up, you may hear a little bit of a hiss as it pressurizes. Of course, it's only gonna pressurize up to here because the shutoff is closed right now. But you wanna have a look at this gauge because this should increase in pressure from zero up to, uh, right now we're reading, I think it's about 70 PSI. So after we pass through the regulator, we're gonna come to this one and we're gonna turn this one on here as well. Okay, and now that's on, we're ready to head back up to the cooktop and start cooking. Okay, so we have electrical power to our unit. We have turned on all the gas lines and we now have electricity and gas here at our cooktop and we're ready to start cooking. The first thing you're gonna notice when you come here is probably this little uh, red LED indicator to indicate that it's in the standby mode. If you see two little LEDs up here near the lock, that's a, you, you see a little symbol of a key, that basically means uh, it, it's in a locked out mode. So, you know, accidental presses don't get registered. Uh, if it is in that mode, you just hold the key down and it will, you know, go back into its normal standby mode where you can interact with the buttons as normal. I'm gonna put it in and out of locked mode right now, just so you can see how that works. It's a hold and it's a press for about five seconds. And there it goes there, you hear a long beep and then you'll see, oh, I beg your pardon, it's only one, uh, one um, uh, LED indicator on there right now. So if you see it up here, just there, 
then you know it's locked. So to unlock it, it really is just a reverse of locking it. It's a press and it's a hold for a solid five seconds. They'll do that long beep again. And then when that's gone, we can see only our standby light. Touching the standby light just once will show you that each cooker, left and right, will actually have a number indicated to it. Right now they're both showing zero as neither of them are on. I'm gonna start up the outboard or starboard or right hand uh, uh, cooktop right now. So to do that, these two little symbols right here, one indicates the right hand side, one indicates the left hand side. So I press the one that indicates for the right and then only the number for that right hand side is showing. And then I take my finger down this slider and then I slide it to the temperature that I want. Let's put it all the way up on nine. And then you'll hear it start ticking and clicking and gas will start to flow. You, you may hear it go through a few clicking cycles. That's the piezoelectric starter doing its thing. And then you may hear a little bit of a, like a, a fire starting whoosh sound, which is, you know, just like your barbecue at home. And then you can immediately feel the heat coming off the plate. So if I hold my hand just a few centimeters above it, I can definitely feel that. Obviously don't touch it. It gets quite hot quite fast. Let's go ahead and start up the one on the left-hand side now. So just like the other side, we press the button that corresponds with the left-hand cooktop. And then we take our finger down this slider and then we slide it all the way up. Let's go for nine as well. Let's max it out. Away that piezoelectric goes again. And then away she goes. And I can already feel some heat coming. If you've already started one, you may found the other one actually starts a lot faster because it's got a, it's got something burning right next to it. So uh, it's usually a faster start the second time around. And then there they are, and you're ready to start cooking. Okay, so now we're done cooking. Uh, I'm gonna go through the shutdown procedure and everything you can expect to see and how to safely turn it off and, and shut everything down. It really is just a reverse of setting it up, but we will go through it anyway. Okay, so as you can see, these cooktops are still here at nine. And what I wanna do is I wanna turn each of them off. There, you can go ahead and take each one individually and you can slide it all the way back down to zero again, if you like. That's one way to do it. However, if you're truly just done cooking, you can just hit the off button and then it'll shut both of them down immediately. So either one of those two um, uh, those two methods will, will turn it off, but uh, you do want to follow it up by hitting that power button. And you're immediately going to notice that these two symbols that come up here, they, they both have an H. The H stands for hot. Uh, so it's just basically warning you that these are still hot. Um, if I was you, I'd probably wait a little while before you close the lid. I mean, there's no point introducing heat into here. Um, it, it is okay to close it because these are designed as a heat sink, but uh, I would definitely choose to just leave it open for a little while just until these have a chance to cool down even if it's only a few minutes give it as much time as you can okay so we've turned the cooker off and we're going to go back down into this locker and we're going to shut off all the valves for the system because we don't intend on using it again